What do you mean the dude already cut you, but he's not cutting you deep enough? You want me to cut you? Are you sure? Like, cut you, cut you. Like, take this razor blade and cut you. All right. Yeah, I mean, I'm, it's weird, but yeah, I'll cut you. You've got to be the stupidest motherfucker. And you already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life. And we're back. It is Friday, Friday, Friday. Payday, 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 finally. Man, let's go get these men paid. Man, I'm glad it's the end of the week. Even though I know I got a whole bunch of stuff I got to do this weekend. Hey, to my people in the front, thank God it's Friday. Over the span of a decade... I saw things you wouldn't believe. Things I've told y'all that people are like, no, nah, didn't happen, couldn't have happened. It all happened. But worse than the things you see sometimes are the things that people ask you to do. Guess they figure we're both locked up. Nothing really surprises or shocks either one of us anymore. You shouldn't have a problem doing it. Some weird guys, to say the least. And you get some crazy questions asked to you and some crazy requests. Today, we are going to talk about some of the craziest things guys ask me to do. Some of the craziest things I've seen some guys do. Some of the stuff is just mind-boggling. Looking back on it now, I see why some of these guys want to do these things. Or have these things done. But it's still not very smart. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Some of what I'm going to tell y'all today is, to say the least, disturbing. If you're eating your lunch and you think you're going to sit there and just enjoy your peanut butter and jelly sandwich, your ham and cheese, whatever it is you got going on, you might run a rethink watching this while you're eating. Just keeping it real, just letting you know. It's not going to be all the way pleasant. It's not going to be all the way bad. There's going to be some parts of today's video that you're not going to want to mix in with your lunchtime or dinnertime meal, wherever you're at watching. So, yeah, some of the craziest things I was asked to do, some of the crazier things I've seen guys do. <laughs> you know how to seen it. You know how to lived it. So, God. Let's relive it. Let's do a quick update before we jump into today's video. Everybody keeps asking about the Hummer. And shout out to the guy that made the comment and said, it may be a blessing that that Hummer broke down. Now you can get you a real truck. I have real trucks. Construction company, I have to have trucks. I have trucks, trailers, I have cars, and I have my Hummer. I like my Hummer. I understand they have issues. Not a whole lot of vehicles that don't. My homeless got low mileage. Like, really low mileage. I don't know what's going on with the Hummer right now. I haven't called. The last thing I said to them was, call me when my truck is right and ready to be picked up. Don't be talking about no bill. Don't tell me I owe anything because I don't owe anything. Whatever's wrong with my engine now, y'all are responsible for. Whatever's going on with the transmission, whatever parts y'all got to order... Whatever you need, y'all are responsible for. I don't want to hear anything except the truck is like brand new. Come get it. They are most likely going to have to replace the motor in my truck. I'm not accepting no used motor with 100,000 miles on it because my truck ain't got that on it. The Hummer ain't got that on it. I'm not taking no used transmission because I didn't pay for no used transmission. So once I hear from them... Y'all will know because I will be back in the Hummer. I don't know how long it's going to take. I'm not calling up there. I'm not irritating myself. I'm not agitating myself. I, you know, I just can't take the stress. I can't. I damn near short-circuited the day it happened. And with, with everything that I have just as a whole in life, I understand some stresses can be avoided. And when it's time to get it back, I'll get it back. Also, shout out prayers for my mom and her husband. They both got COVID. My mom's got COPD. 
uh, which is not a good thing to have with COVID, but they're both getting better. But, um, you know, make sure y'all pray for them. Aside from that, I feel better now that I'm not sick. You ever notice when you get sick, how sick you feel? And then after you're fully done being sick and it's passed its course 100%, you feel better than ever. And I feel great. I still got a little raspy voice, <clears throat> small cough, but I feel great. Life is good. I can't complain about a whole lot. I got the everyday same problems that everybody else has got in this world. Some of my problems that I don't talk about with people and events that I keep off YouTube is that's the type of stress that a lot of y'all can't handle. But I manage it because I know that everything's going to be all right. So that's where we're at with that. Let's get into today's video. Been talking to somebody about prison. And they say, well, I liked it there. Meaning they liked being at the place they were at. No one should ever say they liked being locked up. If you liked being locked up, um, I ain't got a whole lot to say. I did know a couple different gay dudes that didn't have a problem with being locked up. But that's because, like, in there, they were like diamonds. You know, to the guys that messed with the boys. Them gay dudes had the world handed to them. They would get a man and he would... Make sure that the boy ate everything he needed. The boy had new clothes, new shoes, everything all the time. So I have met some guys like that that liked it. No offense to anybody. I've met some guys that were mentally unstable that liked the prison. I've met guys that were homeless on the streets that preferred prison over being out in the cold. But your everyday guy is not going to like prison. Now you will... I won't say like, you would rather be at certain places than others. That I will go with. I would rather be at Greensville, which was crazy, than anywhere else. And that's because that's all I really knew because I had been there so long. I had only been to one prison prior to that here in the state of Virginia. And a whole bunch of jails. I've been through a pile of jails. But as far as the prisons go, this is the second prison I've been at in Virginia. And the prison I would spend... You know, around eight years in, straight. Guys didn't want to be there. Greensville, to sum it up, you've got a rec yard that in the summertime might have a thousand people on it. You've got everything from your gang members squatted up to your lifers that are, some of them are just shot all the way out, gone in the head that you can walk into them and potentially be killed by. You got your maniacs, you guys that had their 15 seconds of shame, 15 seconds of fame that made the news for doing heinous things. You seen them five, 10 years ago on the news for murdering all these people and here y'all all walking past each other on the wreck. Y'all, you like, damn, this man killed six people with a kitchen knife and there he is. You got your boys like anywhere else that identify as females that walk in groups. Sometimes they just stand on the sidewalk. You got your guards out there. You name it, you got it. Greensville was the equivalent of if you knock down a project, like a huge project where just crime is crazy all the time and put a fence up where the project used to be, that's what our rec yard was like. You had your guys out there selling dope. You had your junkies walking around scratching and itching every single day, wheeling and dealing, trying to get high. If it could happen, it happened. If you can imagine it, it has happened on them yards. I've seen everything from people lose their lives to prison yard weddings. Everything from guys knife fighting to guys consummating their marriage over in the corner. To sum it up, Greensville, if you were a scary individual, someone that had never really done time, had never been around that caliber of people, Greensville could be very intimidating. You walk on, you come onto that compound and you look, and everywhere you look, there's just these tall buildings with these tiny little windows. And they're everywhere, spread out. There are big warehouses there where guys work all day. Then you get into the pod, you take a look around. Some of these guys have been there since this place is open. Some of these guys have been here 20 years at this same place. A lot of the guys that you're looking at are older gentlemen. Been locked up long as you've been alive. 
It's just a shock in itself when you get there. What I didn't take into play is how some of the most normal guys would end up being the most crazy guys. I've seen a lot of that. Guys that I would come to know or know of, and you thought they were somewhat eyed or halfway decent, only to come to realize one day when they approach you or you see them do something that, oh, this dude's batshit crazy. Like, he is not all there. The cheese has slid all the way off his cracker. Dude is gone. Like, he's straight jacket, mouth guard, rubber helmet material. Like, he definitely sat at the front of the bus, definitely had to wear a seatbelt. This dude's not who I thought he was. We have a white guy that comes in our pod, and this dude doesn't want to be in here. He is left now, out of our pod, went to the hole numerous times. Like, two times, I, I want to say it was two different times he had left. And every time he left, he left with the intention of getting shipped up off of here. He didn't want to be here. He could not take the gang activity, guys extorting, guys robbing, guys fighting, guys stabbing. Uh, the homosexual conduct. He couldn't take just the everyday life of what being locked up there was. He couldn't adjust. It was just too much. Not to mention, he didn't have violent crime. So he fell in the category of guys that shouldn't have really been there to begin with, with all these lifers, murderers, guys that had just done bad things. He wanted up off of here, didn't care where he got sent as long as he didn't have to deal with this place. Two different times this dude completely just crashed out. Crashed out meaning doing something in front of the guards to get yourself locked up. Hoping that when he gets put in the hole, they're going to say, look, we're just going to transfer you up off of here. Well, I told you there came a time where up there you had so many guys checking in. Checking in is when you go to the guards and say, look, I don't want to be in here. I fear for my life. Whatever it may be, put me in the hole. Keep me in the hole. Ship me. Transfer me. Get me out of here. I'm going to die. You had guys that did that seven days a week they might owe somebody some money it's commissary day everybody's coming back with their bag they know they can't pay that man that man is standing over there in his doorway looking out at everybody that owes him and he keeps looking at you because you ain't went to the store yet you ain't went to commissary why well, you ain't went to commissary but you borrowed stuff from me you got a lot of that that goes on so guys are checking in checking in happens a lot on store day commissary day shh, you better watch them that's what we used to say you better watch them you know what I mean? If 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 you owe it, throw it. You know what I mean? <laughs> you got to watch these dudes. This guy twice now had attempted to get up off Greensville and couldn't get up off there. The guards had come in and made an announcement. Sergeant Whitfield came in one day and said, listen here, the hole is packed. Are oh, you scary muff that want to try to get up out of here? Owing somebody some debt. You know, ran up a debt on the gambling table. They got you some drugs you can't pay for. This is a sergeant telling everybody. You know, got you some drugs you can't pay for. Ripped off one of our little local dope boys up in here. You messing with somebody's boy. You done told on somebody you done did something you shouldn't do. And bring that shit to us. We're not doing no more check-ins. From now on, just so y'all know, if a man checks in here, he's got to tell on somebody. So if anybody comes to us checking in, you got to tell on somebody. So now y'all know if a man gets up out this pod by checking in, he's told on somebody. So go ahead. You want to get up off of here? Be a snitch. I'll be upstairs waiting for you to tell me who's selling the dope, who's making the knives, who got the phones. Come on up there. I'll get you up off here. All you got to do is tell on somebody. Y'all have a good day. And he walks a little skinny, frail, cockroach body having ass up out of there. The man literally looked like he looked like something from a spirit Halloween store. Like a a skinny praying mantis. He leaves out and it is just, dudes are laughing. A lot of us are laughing. I'm laughing like, oh man, a lot of these dudes about to have a bad time. Like they can't, can't run from your debt no more. If you owe it, you better throw it. You know, if you owe me, act like you know me. I need mine. You can see the scary dudes and look in their faces as after he says this. And that. A lot of different dudes are like, shit. I planned in checking in tomorrow. Oh, these dudes, $200 for dope, and I ain't got no money. I can't tell on nobody, man. I'm a dead man if I tell on somebody. And I get to the next place or wherever, they'll kill me. What happens if I go to the hole and they don't let me transfer and they put me back over here? Well, this white dude, he had already been in the hole twice for doing different things in front of the guards intentionally to get locked up, and they brought him back a third time. I don't deal with the dude a lot. I've talked to him. 
just out of just being a good guy. You say, what's up? Hey, da, da, da. We had a handful of conversations. In this time frame of him coming back, some shit transpired in the chow hall between two dudes, a dude in front of me and a dude behind me. I didn't know they had beef. They weren't from my building. I didn't know neither one of them. I was in the last group of guys coming out of my building to go into the chow hall, and I got mixed in with a pod of guys from another building, and in between these two dudes, right? They go to stabbing at each other, getting at each other in the center of the chow hall, and in the process of that, the damn dude stabs me in my wrist. I didn't do anything. When he started trying to stab me behind me, I threw my hands up because it's your initial reaction. Coming at you, you see a knife, you, oh, I did like this. He swung down, tried to hit the dude behind me, hit me in my damn hand. I grabbed my hand, right? I moved out the way. They kept going at it. Guards come in. They locked me and the two dudes up on investigation because I'm hit. I'm bleeding. I got to be part of what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Tell the guards, don't know. Didn't have nothing to do with it. What did you see? Didn't see anything, man. I just woke up this morning. We're standing there. Chaos broke out. I'm bleeding. Y'all locked me up. Y'all put me in the hole. They take me to Southside Regional Medical Center, which is the hospital that deals with, like, when you get a vein. Um, stabbing is they usually try to take care of inside the prison. But once, like, a vein or an artery or something gets cut, they're going to take you to the main hospital. They take me to Southside Regional. They fix my wrist. Fix the vein. I think they, I don't know if they, like, burned the edge of the vein. I don't know what they did. They had that shit underneath the white sheet, and I just sat there with my head turned. Stitch me up to the hole I go in. Realize I ain't done nothing wrong. I work a maintenance job. I have to be in this building. I have to be in this pod. That's where we're housed at. They put me back in there. I go back in my old cell, right? This dude I'm telling you about that, it, you know, pretty much checked in twice. We're not going to say checked in, but sometimes crashing out can be checking in. It can be a way of checking in. He had crashed out twice, check in. Comes to my cell one day with a proposition. And you're not, this is hard to believe, but the dude comes to my cell and he goes, how'd you heal up? Healed up good. Why, what's up? Did it hurt? What do you mean, did it hurt? Like, when a dude stabbed you, did it hurt? I mean, it didn't feel good. It it didn't hurt that bad at the moment. It stung. It hurt more while it was healing. And you know, I mean, the process of getting stitched up and all that and getting it cleaned out, that hurt because it was a rusty-ass piece of metal he stuck me with. That part of it hurt. But as far as, like, the getting stabbed, no, nah, it didn't hurt that bad. Why? If I pay you some money, will you stab me? What? Look, I need to get up off here. I went off this camp. I went off Greensville. But if you check in, you got to tell on somebody. I can't tell on nobody, man. And they're not going to let me check in. So the only way I can get up off of here is if, it make, if I make it seem like somebody wants to kill me. But I don't know who it is. At that point there, they can't just put me back on the yard because I got a lawsuit on. They got a lawsuit on their hands. If something happens to me, I'm going to tell them, hey, somebody tried to kill me. I don't know who it is. You can't put me back in population. If you do, my people already know. I've already told them they're going to contact an attorney. You've got to shit me. Somebody stabbed me. My life's in danger. Move me to another facility. He runs all that by me. He's like, if I pay you, will you stab me? I'm not really trying to stab you like just because i got hit in the wrist don't make me an expert on stabbings like i'm not michael myers in this bitch i don't run around just hacking people up and getting stabbed a couple times a week i'm not i didn't go to school for this i just got caught in the middle of some bullshit you know what i mean but i guess he figures now that because i got the stab mark that i'm an expert in stabbings i said sweet so on man he said i'll bring you 25 dollars worth of commissary and you're gonna stab me i'll bring the knife and you stab me and then I'm just going to get caught intentionally bleeding so I can get shipped up off of here. I said, I guess, man, but I'm not like, I'm not stabbing you in the throat or the chest or nothing like that. Like that's a, you'll mess around and die, man. I had me on death row locked up the rest of my life because I didn't kill you. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, man, I, I'll do it, but we got to, you got to let me know what you're talking about. He's like, all right, all right. I figured he would come back at a later date, later that night, whatever. He's like, all right, all right. He walks off, right? I go back to what I'm doing in my cell. I'm actually looking through CDs and shit. I loan some CDs out and I'm missing a CD. I'm like, what the hell did I get a CD to? I'm trying to figure it out, right? He comes back with a bag of commissary. Here you go. Sits in the cell. I'm like, well, you want me to stab you right now? Like, damn, man, don't, we don't warm up or nothing. Get to know each other. Like, have some, you know, a sit down or you don't want to have lunch, nothing. And like, discuss this, just stab you. 
Yeah, man, I'm ready to get the hell up out of here. I don't want to be here. I want up off this compound, man. This, this compound's crazy, man. I can't be here. I can't do my time here. I said, all right, man, well, you got to get a knife. He lifts his shirt, and he pulls out this piece of fence. And we call him a poker. And it's about, maybe about seven inches long. It's like an ice pick. Rusty, galvanized. It's supposed to be galvanized, but it's not galvanized at all because the bitch is rusty. It looks like he found it out on the wreck yard and sharpened it, put a makeshift handle for some sheets around the bottom of it. He hands me this poker. I said, um, all right, so uh, where, where are we going to do this set? He was like, you, can hit, you think you can hit me in my back? And as he's telling me different points, I'm poking the tip of this thing. I'm like, man, this thing is dull. Like, this is going to hurt like hell. You might want to go sharpen this and come back. Like, I'm going to have to poke this shit out you really hard with this thing for it to bust the skin. Like, this is not sharp. He's like, no, nah, it'll do the job. It'll do the job. Trust me, it'll do the job. I said, so what, hit me in my back. I'm like, nah, nah, I don't want to stab him in his back. I'm afraid I'm going to hit one of his lungs. If I go too deep, I hit his heart. You know what I mean? What, I don't know what's in your back. You ain't a big dude. You're kind of skinny. Like, this bitch might, I might mess around and bury this whole thing in you. I said, nah, nah, nah. That's not, I'm not, I'm not hitting you in your back, man. I don't want to puncture one of you. Well, hit me up top. Man, I'm not, I don't know all that anatomy shit. I don't know what all's up there. I'm not, no. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I said, we eventually agreed. I said, I'll hit you in the back of your shoulder. You sure? You think that'll get, that'll, I said, that's going to bleed. Like, that's going to bleed a lot. And all the guards got to do is see the blood on your shirt. They going to lock your ass up. I still try to, I said, well, let, let me sharpen this on my cell floor for a couple minutes before we stab you. No, nah, man, I want to get up out of here. You've been paid. I said, poke me with it so I can go. I said, all right, man. He turns around, puts his hand, and we had these two red squares painted on the wall. And then those red squares is where you hang your pictures. And you put all your family photos, holiday cards, a calendar, only in those two red squares to keep your room from becoming the equivalent of a 17 year olds on the streets and dudes just hanging posters and pictures everywhere you don't do that you keep them in a the square he turns and puts his hands inside the red square and i tell him i'm like let your left arm down man. let your left arm hang and just brace yourself against the wall i take this ice pick and i'm thinking man this shit is dull that's all i keep thinking is how dull this thing is i poke against my finger i'm like this is dull you know what i mean like probably got to hit him about seven eight times to even break his skin he's gonna have a whole bunch of bruises it looked like he'd been shot with a BB gun a bunch of times before this goes in his skin. I said, you ready? He was like, yes. Yeah. On the count of three. One, two, and I stuck him with it. Here's the problem with that bitch being dull. I hit him way harder than I should have hit him. He was 100% right on it would break the skin. I was only supposed to just poke a little hole in him. You know what I mean? Just a little hole. So there would be some blood that would come out, be on his shirt, and then they would... See this, lock him up, and put him in the hole. I buried this bitch to the hilt. I put probably this much, probably four inches of this rusty ass piece of fence right into his shoulder to the point that when I stuck it in his shoulder and it went as deep as it did, my initial reaction, I, I let it go. Like, oh shit. Like, I wasn't ready for all that. I didn't expect that. I expected to be like, book, and pull it back. I buried a bitch in his shoulder, pulled back, and was like, I looked at him, he's like, you do it, you do it. And at first he did this, uh, like, did it work? Did it work? And I'm like, yo, 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 be still, be still. He's like, what? I'm like, it's still there. What do you mean it's still there? It's still there. I'm like, be still, man. I pulled this bitch out and his back just starts leaking. Like the side of his shoulder, you got your back and then you got your shoulder blades. The side of his shoulder blade just starts leaking. The shit is running down his back, running on my floor, covering his boxer lines, dripping all, he didn't took his shirt off, dripping all through his shirt, um, off his, down his back, down his boxes, like, the shirt's laying on the floor, the shirt's got blood all over it, now I'm looking, I'm like, yo, there's blood everywhere, this dude is leaking, he, every time he turns, more blood will drip out and hit the floor, I'm like, all right, here, put your shirt on and get out of my cell, man, get out of my cell, go, 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 right, he leaves, I start cleaning the blood up immediately, they're gonna come in, wanna know who stabbed him, I gave him his shank back, here, take that with you, man, I got it out of his shoulder, take that with you, he rolls out, right, meanwhile, I'm frantically, trying to clean his blood up because I don't know if he's going straight to the control booth. He's going to wait till child what his next move is because he just, I told him, get out of my cell, man. He dips off, right? I mean, I'm wiping, trying to get the shit off the wall, get it off the floor to so get everything cleaned up. I'm rinsing the rag out inside the toilet, rinsing it, rinsing it, rinsing it, clean everything with soap. I take the rag down to the end of the tier, throw it in the trash can after I've rinsed it out as much as I can, but it's clearly all stained up, right? This, at this point, it is I'm going to say 
maybe 1245, 1 o'clock, we're on standby for chow. Next thing we're going to do now is go to chow. Then we come back from chow. We're going to go to ranked. I'm thinking, please don't go to chow like this. Please don't go to chow like this. Meantime, a couple of these other homeboys have come over like, yo, what happened with homeboy? Man, what'd you do? I'm like, man, he, I did what he asked me to do. You know what I mean? Like, this dude is crazy. He doesn't go to chow. I was glad about that because had he had gone to chow, they came in and locked our pod down because you showed up to the chow hall stabbed. That means it happened in our pod. We're all going to go on lock. Everybody's going to be mad at me because I got us all locked down. Drugs are going to stop being sold. People owe you money. People are going to have to flush things they shouldn't have because now we're getting shook down. He waits until after chow goes out on the wreck yard. Middle of the wreck, everything's going on. The guards usually... Very rare where they come on the wreck yard. They walk around the outside of the fence or congregate beside the building and smoke or be over there bullshitting and talking to a female. I see him walk into the fence and he tells the guard, hey, hey, come here, come here, come here. And the guard walks up and says, what happened? He's like, somebody stabbed me. By now, about an hour has passed since I poked this man with his nasty ass ice pick. Turns around and sure enough, he's got his blue shirt on. His blue shirt, the whole back side of it, his jeans, all that is soaked in blood. They weren't smart enough to pick up on the fact that there wasn't a hole in the blue shirt. There wasn't a hole. I told you he took his shirt off. There wasn't a hole in his white shirt. All the blood was on the shirt, but he would have had to have his shirt off. But that also could make sense because there was a lot of people out there with their shirt off, right? They called the code. We got one stuck. We got one that's been stabbed. We need medical. Uh, we need, you know, sergeant down here. All these guards come onto the yard. We continue. Everybody's doing what they're doing. They pull him off the yard. They lock him up, take him to the hole. He refuses to tell him anything. Who stabbed him? How it happened? He don't know. All he knows is that he had had some conflict with some gang members. He's not going to tell him what gang members it is, what's going on, and that a group of guys ran by him and in the process of them running by him, he got stabbed. Yeah, dude had me to stick him so he could get up off there. He got up off there. I've never seen that guy again. I don't know where they transferred him to. I know his name. I'm not going to say his name. They transferred him up off of there, and that would be the end I seen of him. Ironically enough, it would not be, and you're going to see with the second story today, it would not be the first time that somebody asked me to do something along the lines of what I had to do that day. Most people would say, $25, $20 to stick somebody? No, nah, it's kind of nasty and grotesque. I'm not going to do it. I didn't, I mean, dude, I guess just felt like I was OG stab a lot. Like, you know what I mean? I was a little shank maker, like. Because of that shit that transpired in the child hall, I'm the ultimate stabber. Like, I'm the, the dude, you know what I mean, ghost face from Scream or something. Yeah, that was definitely a crazy situation and a crazy, crazy request. I stabbed people in the past. I had a situation on the streets where I ended up having to stab one of my homeboys because he was drunk and, you know, straight off his rocker and was trying to kill me with a broken liquor bottle i had to stick people in the past i had situations where i had actually cut people in the past and stuck people but i never had anybody up until that moment say hey if i pay you will you stab me could you do that would you do that <laughs> let me know in the comment box i guess it's fair to say that over the years i'd seen a lot of different blood I'd seen a lot of guys shed blood i'd shed blood i'd cause people to shed their blood like tattooing i would constantly see blood kind of became normal i mean i guess that's the best way to explain it is it wasn't squeamish i wasn't you know seeing a wound wasn't nothing out of the ordinary i had seen guys that had MRSA, staph infection big holes where this stuff had taken over right cut wounds stabbings like just became somewhat normal you never really 100 percent get used to it but after years and years and years especially with tattooing and seeing blood all the time you come to not be squeamish now strangely enough now that i've been released i'm not a fan of blood my stomach ain't what it used to be somebody gave us some deer meat my wife was working and a customer came in dude was an avid hunter and she asked me you want some deer meat I remember my dad cooking it when I was young. I've known other people that cooked it. I said, sure, you know? Yeah, bring it home. She brings this stuff home. This stuff is fresh. This stuff is in a Ziploc baggie. There's a whole bunch of blood in the bottom of the bag. Like, they cut this 
fresh off the animal and gave it to us in a bag. So I'm like, all right, tonight I'm going to you know, season the meat, cook the meat. I opened the bag, took one smell of it, and it had that raw meat, iron smell. It smelled like murder in a bag. I'm just like, oh, hell no. So I take it and I rinse it off, and I'm doing my best to try to just get it to where it don't stink like this. And this stuff is turning my stomach. I'm not who I used to be. I can't stomach it. I ended up cooking it, smelling it while it was cooking. I'm like, oh, no. Cut up in little pieces, gave it to the dog. I'm not eating this, right? Sometimes you find yourself in situations that you do your best to try to figure out, how did I get here? How did I become this guy? Like, I never should have done this to begin with, man. Now look at me. It's exactly what I had. My, I was questioning myself on on today's second story. And I told y'all I got down to two years or less. Coming to the end of a 10-year sentence, they sent me to re-entry. About to go home. We got to tinker with your mind. We got to make sure you're okay. We ain't trying to release no psychos into the world. You've been locked up a long time. You need to readjust. You know, we guys that make parole, they don't get that opportunity. And that's why I think a lot of them fail. It's because they don't get the opportunity to come to terms with the fact they're going home or go through these classes to teach you how to readjust. I get sent off, right? To Indian Creek, I go. Dorm life. I just went from being in a cell for the last eight plus years to being in a dorm. There are dorms everywhere. There is no privacy. You are showering five, six other men. You're sitting on a toilet that's got nothing that separates you and the toilet next to you. There's four other people sitting on toilets beside you. And all y'all, you know, dropping a deucey ball at the same time. I hated open bay dorms. Put me in a cell any day. Do not stick me in this warehouse full of bunk beds and lockers with all these guys. You do not know how irritating, agitating, and just inhuman you feel when you're taking a shower. And there's a five and a half foot wall where the shower is. And on the other side of the wall, there's sinks, toilets, and urinals. You do not know how degrading it feels to be taking a shower. And here comes Jabba the Hutt into the bathroom to sit down on the toilet. You got to listen to all the music that his ass is making as he sits on the toilet. You got to smell all the smells that are that come along with him being on the toilet. And now it feels like you are taking a shower in a septic tank. Like you for real feel like you're taking a shower in toilet water. You went from smelling all clean like soap to Mr. Big Body, you know what I mean? Sitting over there on the toilet, stinking up the whole bathroom. And as you're showering now, you've been in the shower or something before and your wife come in or your girl, whoever, or your husband come in and sit on the toilet. You're like, why you do that while I'm in the shower? Like, it's not cool. Stand there brushing your teeth at the sink. Somebody comes, sits on the toilet. Now you feel like you're brushing your teeth with poops to dent. You know what I mean? Like, your whole mouth, just you just can't get it clean enough because the smell of him behind you on the toilet is going up your nostrils while you're brushing your teeth. You're just like, spit it out like I give up man it's just got to be what it is we get to a point where I've got a homeboy and shout out to my homeboy Jimmy Gay Jimmy Gay is his real name and wasn't gay just his last name like my last name is Williams Jimmy Gay his last name was gay I mean we joked on him when he first came in he, you know grown ass man ha ha I done heard it all before yeah real funny right me and Jimmy get tight, man. Shout out to you, Jimmy Gay. Hey, if you see this, this video, jump in the comment section and uh, let me know what you. And by letting me know what you, you're going to tell me what Justin's last name was. You chill with the dude Justin all the time. You chill with little Phil, big Phil and head. Tell me what Justin's last name is so I know what you. And I'll hit you up, man. Jimmy gets in a tattoo. I teach Jimmy a bunch of different tricks with the tattoo. Jimmy actually did a bunch of stuff on me. Little things here and there. He got pretty good with that tattoo gun. Jimmy gets tatted up. He gets tattoos throughout. Well, Jimmy's got this knot on his back. You ever seen somebody's got like a knot on their shoulder blade? And it like starts off as like a little bump. And over the years, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's like there's a knot there on his shoulder blade. He comes to me one day and says, Jay, like, can we get this off? I said, what do you mean get it off? He's like, I want it gone. Like, I'm tired of it. 
It looks weird. It looks like there's a like a, a damn horn trying to grow out of my back. Like I got a knot on my back. I said, man, I don't know nothing about no knots. He was like, do you think we can cut it and get inside of it and get whatever's in there out? I said, I'm sure you can, man. He's like, all right, cool, cool, cool. So Jimmy rolls out, goes over to a bunk with another guy, and everything always training. When guys get an idea in their head, they're bored. So it's not like you got a whole lot to do. You go do something else and then come back to it. No, he's going to have dude lance this thing. I think that's the proper word. I'm sure somebody will correct me. He's got this dude lance this thing. And then they're going to take their fingers and push whatever's inside this knot on his back out. Jimmy comes back over to my bunk a couple minutes later. And he's like, hey, Jay, come over to my bunk. And so I cut through the cut area, through the lockers and stuff, and go over to his bunk section. And there's th three or four guys standing there, and one of the guys got a razor in his hand. And he's like, Jay, cut me. Come again? I need you to cut me. And he's already told me what's going on, so I'm like, you want me to cut you? Don't cut me too deep. But yeah, I need you to cut this thing open so we can get what's in it out, man. I'm tired of, I've had this knot on my back for like 10, 15 years and it just gets bigger over time. I want it gone, man. I don't want to go home with all these tattoos on me and, you know, this penitentiary body from where I've been working out and I got this damn knot on my back. I'm like, so you want me to cut you? Yeah, I want you to cut me. Look what they're doing to me. I look at it and where two other dudes have attempted to cut him, it's just scratches. They're taking this razor, and this is a a razor. And they're trying to cut him, but they don't want to cut him too deep. So they're just like just scratching him. He's got like a bunch of little scratches on his knot. I was like, all right, man, I'll, all right, man, sure, I'll cut you, whatever, man. Jimmy sits down on the bunk, leans forward. I stand behind him. I said, you ready? He was like, yeah. I cut him. As soon as I cut him, this thing opened up. Barely bled at all, right? But you could see that when I cut him, you could see it looked like Gouda cheese, if y'all know what Gouda cheese is. Like string cheese inside of it started to come out. Not big on Dr. Pimple Popper shows, shows that do with deal with zits or toenails and all of that. That shit is gross to me. I know some people are intrigued by it. Not a fan. That's everything I've been through. I'm still not a fan of that type of stuff. I didn't deal a lot with stuff inside knots on people's backs or ingrown toenails nothing like that right so i cut him he's like is it good and i'm like yeah you're good and they're like yo yeah he cut the shit out you yeah that sh it's open now like we can get it out i said all right man i'm gone i hand the dude the razor back i go back over to my bunk sit back down do what i'm doing dude comes over there a couple minutes later dude justin does and says hey you gotta come see this man I said, no, I don't want to see it. Why do I want to see it? He's like, man, it's amazing. You have to come see it. You can't imagine what's inside that bunk. I go over there, and big Phil Estelle, got his thumbs pressed. Mm. I mean, he's doing all the animations, trying to be funny. Mm. Squeezing this thing, right? And this stuff is just stringing out, spooling out, like just threads of it coming out of his back, right? And I'm looking, and I can smell it. I'm like, that, that. Like, not doing that, but thinking back on it. Yeah. Uh, you can smell it. They've got a piece of tissue there. And he's squeezing it while the other dude holds it. And eventually they get to the end and he pop, pulls like this little pod. That's the mess where I could like a little sack out of Jimmy's back. Boop. And the tissue is full. There is a mountain of this yellowish white, cheesy, stinky looking stuff on this piece of tissue, this rolled up tissue paper this guy's got in his hand, right? All right, I've had enough of that. I don't want no more parts of that. Jimmy heals up. The knot is gone. It is as flat as the day it was that the knot showed up knocking on his back, right? Wouldn't be long after this, this thing turns into like a trend. Anybody that's got a bump on their arm, something that's been there, for years, a bump on their back. One dude had one on the back of his head. They want to lance it and get it out so they can go home. Who wants to go home with his egg on the back of their head? Laying in my bunk one day, I'm kicked back. Dude comes over. I don't even really mess with this dude. Squats down beside my bunk. Hey, Jay. What's up, man? Cut my head. What? Cut my head, man. I cut the back of my head. I don't want to cut your head, man. What I want to... Come on, man, you did it for Jimmy, man. Cut, just cut the little spot in the back of my head so Big Phil can squeeze it out. 
Sit up on my bunk. Come on, let's go over your bunk. You ain't you just about to get string cheese on my bed. We'll go over to his bunk. Lean your head forward. Cut him. Walk off. They do the same thing. Over a period of the next three months, I probably did that six times. Maybe more. Jim, if you watch this, let me know how many times you think it was. Over a period of the next three months, I probably cut six different people. So that they could get whatever was hiding in that little egg, that sack, that nest that they had on their body up out of there. These are the things that people would never think of when it comes to prison. This type of shit actually happens. Guys get very, very bored when they set their mind to something, they're going to do it. So in me, lancing the bump on Jimmy's back, I became Sir Cuts a lot. I became the guy that Anytime something like somebody has something going on, they come to me like I'm a damn surgeon. Like I know anything about, like by the time it, the sixth, the first one didn't take a whole lot of common sense to do it. I just got to get through the toughness of the layer of skin and then it's going to enter whatever's in there. By the time the sixth would come around, it was pretty much just like <sighs> swipe and walk off. I could get into a really graphic story of implants that I've seen guys doing in the jail, which we'll save for another time, where guys were actually taking certain things, dominoes, shaving them down and turning them into diamonds, shaving them down in the shapes of hearts, shaving them down in the shapes of spades, and then cutting certain sections of their skin and sliding these objects underneath there and letting the surface heal. You know how to use your mind on where a bunch of guys that did it to themselves were putting these implants. Some of these guys would shave things down until they were almost like beads, like love beads, like little marbles, and then slice their parts of their body and then slide these little beads in there and let everything heal up. But that's a story for a whole nother day. So like I said, it is Friday, Friday, Friday. Which means it is payday, payday, payday. Gotta get this Monday. Gotta get the guys paid. Hope y'all enjoyed today's story. Hope I didn't mess up cheese, deer meat, or anything like that for anybody. Just wanted to share this with y'all. I've been thinking about it for a while. I was like, should I? Yeah, I should. Because everybody thinks it's just murder, murder, murder all day in prison. When That can be the case at times, but that's really not always the case. I would had some dudes ask for some weird requests, man. And that was definitely top five were those two right there. I never had nobody come at me on no sexual stuff. Guys know who plays baseball and who don't. You know what I mean? Everybody thinks that if you communicate with a gay guy in prison or you knew any gay guys in prison, you must be gay. They're not going after straight men. They don't want to get into fights. They don't have to go searching to see who's gay. The gay guys are going to approach them. The guys that like boys are going to approach them. Just wanted to make that clear for y'all, man. But anyways, I'm going to get back to work. I'm going to go out and get these checks, get those cashed, and get my guys paid. But y'all know, man, these jails, the tension centers, these prisons, these facilities, they're all just crazier worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. Just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. It's all my real ones. You know, awesome real ones watching. Because y'all still watching me. Man, y'all know how we do. Salute.